everyone, Merrick's here bringing you another video. This one is going to be on Drew McIntyre, Master of the Claymore. So Drew is the uh, boss battle poster this weekend. He is a modern era striker. He is aggressive. Um, he has the raw link. Any color moves start with one more move point. And he's modern era. Gems do 5% more damage. Stock Master of the Claymore gear. He's a coach. He's a pyro coach. Pyro gems do 25% more damage, and moves that generate pyro gems will create one more pyro gem. I think the big selling point in this coach... Also, it's interesting, at least at this point, he doesn't have a, a 21k or a 26k. Uh, perhaps this goes up to 50%? Because um, 25 does seem kind of low, uh, so maybe it goes up to 50%. Anyway, uh, you're going to see a lot of people want him for... People generating like three pyro gems to get it to four so that the piper plate uh, works on them. So I think a lot of people will be very interested in this coach for that reason. Uh, I have seven, yes, seven uh, build sets. Some of them are slight. Oh, sounds like the cats knocked something down. If you heard that, um, some of them will be slight tweaks to builds in case you don't have the right trainers and stuff. We'll talk about that as we get into it. Um, I'm going to start off with no plate equipped. I'll talk about plates you could use. Uh, at the very end, I will run his best build, in my opinion, um, with a drip plate. Uh, but I'll run it without the drip first. So, there's that. 200% um, move damage metal. Double set of Fury 2. 111% um, black gem damage. So, that's what we're going to run with. No plate to start. I'll talk about plates that will be useful for builds in certain situations. This first build set um, doesn't really need a plate. If you're using an ultimate, you of course could put the Piper plate on it. Um, it's the bleed. Uh, Lariat takedown, 1 MP bleed, 155k damage, 268k bleed for 3 turns. Um, so big bleed for low cost. Uh, Glasgow Kiss, 6 MP red, 247k damage, 7x1 area to make into pyro gems. All gems above it turn red. And reverse Alabama Slam, 6 MP red, 163k damage, choose a 7x1 area to swap into green gems. Entourage for this, Sting to get everybody loaded, Apollo for the bleed, Stacy for flat red gem damage, and uh, Woods for more bleed. Uh, I know Woods is pretty rare. Uh, but I want to show this bleed set kind of the best way you could run it um, and still do some things uh, because it doesn't perform as well as I was hoping for. To be honest, you could maybe use it in Showdown, though, um, and sub like Montez uh, where you have Sting for the red match and then you're bleeding every turn because it's only 1 MP, so I could see you using it in Showdown, potentially. Um, if you didn't have a tag link or any of that stuff active. So, so it's 800k for three turns, that's 2.4 million. That won't scale particularly well into uh, six star silver, though. And then we're going with the, the gem damage here, blowing up the board to go with the bleed. Pretty straightforward. Two point three million with the gem damage that way, and then another. If you get all three turns, two point four million on the bleed. Uh, just doesn't um, add up to enough on somebody with the health like Eddie. As far as like uh, from a feud or two or perspective, like I said, maybe showdown. And you can see, and this is a strapless six star silver or six star bronze, right? He just is kicking out. It doesn't output enough damage really to keep him down. So we're gonna end up three cycles, which is why I put woods on. Um, granted, 
You could also be using a red move percentage medal and getting a little bit more out of your moves. Uh, but either way, it's not going to be enough to, you know, keep them down the first couple turns. So while the bleed is really cool and it's really cheap, it's just not impressive to me even at 6-star bronze. Um, based on the other moves that go with it. You could hit this and swipe and stack it a couple times, but then you're not going to get any damage, right? So, like, we could hit this uh, after putting the pyros out, put it on the top row, hit the bleed again, and then take a swipe and, and just blow two columns up. And I'll do that. Uh, maybe I'll cascade. I'll do that, but it doesn't hit real hard. Um, so, for anyone thinking, why aren't you doing that? Well, we'll double stack it here. And you're usually only going to get two, um, and that's if it's on the bottom. If you're really lucky, you'll get three, but it just isn't going to hit super hard. 860k, so that's why. We're going to be fine because of the bleed, and he's out of life here at the end, but that's why I wasn't trying to stack it. So, let's move right along. Uh, this is triple red. This is triple red. There we go. If I click the right one. So we're going to sub one move in. Uh, also, I don't like this one as much because he's only making seven pyros. So even though they're 162k, uh, when Theory's 100%, they'll be 340k, seven, about 2.1 million. Uh, we're going to run this one with flat instead of Theory because flat reds end up being a lot more impressive on the pin and much more likely to keep them down theoretically you could use um theory right but uh i don't really think so and by theory i mean tech theory like a six star silver gem damage buff and all that stuff i don't think that's going to be the way to go personally you do not need 17k santa hogan he's on there for flats uh for this one at six star silver uh percentage is probably better but a six-star bronze, uh, he's fine. Oh, and, and I didn't read the full description of the move, even though I talked about it. Uh, but it's... Again, you would want red percentage for this, which I don't have equipped. 243k damage plus 162k bonus damage for every pyro gem. Recycle's great, though. Uh, obviously, it would be awesome for a pyro boss, because it is fairly chunky. And unfortunately, he can't train himself. So, you know, that's a bummer. So that does like 1.1 million. Um, theory would make it at 50%, like 1.16. One, one, and then you're talking like 2.1 maxed out. So the red flat, double red flat, it makes it hit a lot harder. Because you guys saw how hard I was hitting last build when I blew up the board. Uh, now it's 3 million. Would we gain a full mil out of that? I mean, maybe 100% theory would be just as good, I guess. Um, so again, as you might imagine, I don't love this moveset for anything uh, at all. It's very going to be very similar to the bleed. We might win on the second one here. The wild card also can mess you up on the bottom. It's less pyro gems, so we're just going to go here. One less pyro and one less column. It's probably six of this, half a dozen of the other between that and the bottom, to be honest. Again, you could put uh, Piper's Plate on this for another 100%. A lot better options, though, in my opinion. So uh, I wouldn't, but it would get you an extra 100%. And we just barely squeaked that out in two turns. Okay. Much better for this build set is this way. This one, you do need 17k Santa in feud. This ends up being much more interesting. This would be a great boss battle build, except it's reds, and there's already a ton of great reds in KO, Seth, that sort of thing. So you probably not going to use him too much in boss with all of the great red people. 
Uh, but we're bringing the Spine Buster in, 3 MP, 124k damage, increase your red gem damage 130% for one turn. Right? Uh, I would like this prop, these colors more if it wasn't red, I feel like, for him. Um, just saying. So, actually, same trainers. Uh, you do need 17k Santa for Feud. And it starts to get a little more interesting here. The 100% on the um, Piper Plate Ultimate would make a very substantial difference, but it's so good on so many other people that it would be hard to recommend doing this unless you're like a Drew Mark or that sort of thing. For like primary plate, you know, cheap shot, head games, escape artists, all the general stuff, because we don't have anything buffing his uh, jam it, gem damage on the primary plates, and he recycles flawlessly, so. So with the boof, I wish there was a way to get that two turns. Uh, 6.1 million, uh, 6.2 million actually. Um, so, you know, we're hitting like significantly harder than we were with the other builds, like significantly. Uh, now we're gonna move into <clears throat> all of the black moves. All of these are gonna be triple black, but ran slightly different. Um, with different trainers and uh, basically kind of different setups. It's this power gem build. Um, so these are the three moves we haven't seen. You, you've seen all the rest of them. So it's going to be these three moves the rest of the way. And um, four different build sets. The last one will be with the drip plate on and also a different build than the other ones. So depending what you have trainer coach wise uh, and playstyle preference and plate preference. You can use a Rhonda's jacket on all of these and it would be very good. Um, and you could use a drip plate uh, with these build sets too. But both are fairly rare. Let's talk about the moves first. Uh, finisher, 10 MP, it's the Claymore. Deal 358k damage, that's pretty chonky. And a 3x7 area to swap into black gems, that's 21 black gems. Really solid finisher at 10 MP. Uh, good mix of gem damage and move damage. Sleeper hold, a sub, 10. You play su 10 sub gems, 181k, 5 turns. And remaining turn into power gems of strength, 178k. Those are chunky power gems. Overhead belly to belly, 7 MP, 155k damage. Choose 5 gems to make into power gems of strength, 178k. Like I said, those are chunky. So, this one, I'm only going to use 1 MP trainer. Which means in feud, you would need um, you would need a black match after the sub to load the finisher, or if you put a bad attitude basic plate on, uh, a black or a blue match would load it. So that's how we're gonna run it this way. This would be like if you don't want to use two MP trainers, you don't have to. Also, it gives you that this is the only way you're getting taker on here. Um, and mine isn't all the way maxed. He's two extra gems, 60% extra damage. This is the only way you're getting Taker on here in Feud without a line bonus um, as well. Uh, without having to, to match. I mean, you could also use 17k Santa. Um, but your finisher wouldn't be loaded either. So, So we're ending up 8 power gems, 348k. These will also be 348k. So this is like the power gem focused one. Do keep in mind, again, bad attitude and a blue match would load it after the sub. Or you, we need a black match. So either or. For this one, you want to put the sub out first. Do not put this one out. And then you want to try and keep your uh, power gems on one side. And not lose them at the same time. Because the finisher is a three area. So we want to avoid this column over. Or or vice versa, right? You could go the other side if you wanted. Uh, for, I'm just taking this side right now. Um, and try and pick spots you don't think he's going to make matches. You're going to lose a few. So he took our black match, but 
we're gonna uh we also have a blue match so if we had um bad attitude played on the blue match is sitting there for us so i will take that uh, and then we'll be loaded next turn anyway. So this would be this this particular time would work in feud. Again, uh, you can hit this column if they're not black gems. Um, so we'll go like this and like that. We'll see what happens. How many we keep. So we're gonna take our swipe, vote our move. Uh, that was a lot of damage. A lot of damage. Those power gems do a lot. Uh, and then we're going to hit the finisher, and that'll easily do it. In fact, I think it might do it all the way. Yeah. That's a 7 million pin with those power jumps like that. So very, very effective. Like, hits very hard at over 348k per power gem. It's just you need a black or a blue match if you're going to use Taker in Feud. Okay. This is, um, this would load, if you have 17k Santa and you don't want to have to worry about a match, this would be loaded uh, after the sub in Feud. Uh, not going to hit quite as hard, uh, but there's no risk, right? Like you hit the sub and then next turn the finisher's loaded and you're recycling. So this is a no risk build set. Obviously, uh, Tori would be better. Um, Nikki would be better if you had her leveled up. And um, I think that's it. Yeah, Tori or Nikki would be better than Ted. Oh, and Eo would also be better. Sorry. Did I actually use Ted? I did. Good. I forgot to save my build set, so I'm just doing previous. So obviously, power gems way hit way less hard this way, but there's also significantly less risk it does take 17k santa to be loaded though after the sub in feud so you're going to start turn one and you're going to sub your opponent for five turns likely that's going to be a great drain and then you're going to put your power gems out yada 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 five match there we want to stay away from that side so we don't lose our power gems hopefully although they're not as impressive as last time they're still good Right. Pretty good situation. Very nice drain. Um, we're going to put the, the power gems all over here to avoid our matching. Yeah, that's fine. That was fine. So we hit 7.2 million with the other trainers, but this is no risk and a turn faster. So we're going to hit, definitely not going to hit for 7.2, but we're still going to hit hard. 5 million with no risk uh, or less risk, and it fully recycles. So you, it's a turn faster, but as you can see, we also didn't keep him down. However, the finisher, it loads everything, right? So we can just skip the sub because we know we have more than enough damage out there. Put the power gems down. And obviously with the sub, you guys could see why Rhonda's jacket would work well buffing the black gems after the sub. And I'm sure you guys can see why the drip plate would be good, right? So this is safer by far, but um, doesn't hit as hard. And that's with plain Janes except for 17k Santa. You can modify that a bunch of different ways. Speaking of which... Uh, let's go this route now. We're going to toss Eo on, since the finisher is pretty big, and then Zombie Edge for flat blacks. Zombie Edge is a little more rare, that's why he wasn't on in the last build set. Um, I think going to be better significantly than Nikki was, we'll see. I mean, I ran it all a few times, because you can see I have him equipped. Uh, I played him a bunch this morning, actually. The only thing I haven't done is actually try him with the drip. Or the Ronda's Jacket. I figured Ronda's Jacket is actually probably almost as rare as the Drip. Just more people um, have multiple Drips and we all talk about it, right? So that's why I'm also not equipping Ronda's Jacket in this one.
that same thing applies. We're just doing it with more damage. Uh, we'll take this side this time for fun. Uh, yeah, yeah, that should be fine. Mm, yeah. And you can see, even though there's seven build sets, we're going through it pretty fast. Uh, this is build set number six. So... So with the 200% metal, the finisher is hitting uh, 1.4 million, uh, 600k on the choose. He did match his color, which will happen in feud. So he will get a move next turn uh, if he kicks out. But this is going to hit a lot harder the gems with zombie edge and the finisher but we only hit five million so honestly nikki and would might be better than zombie edge there potentially because the power gems are so big depending how many power gems we keep i do if if tori or um nikki ash were leveled up I think at six star silver, Tori would be better for sure. Um, and at six star bronze, uh, Nikki Ash with the sub would be better because it's a hundred percent for those five turns and it's not extending the sub. I would not use the reduced sub turns though. You can see we're not losing a ton of power gems. If you place it smartly, it's not really a problem. And you're getting good damage and drain out of the sub. And I don't need to hit the sub because this should be a winner right here. And again, this is with no plates equipped around his jacket or drip. And we'll see the drip next turn. 5.5. So that was a little bit harder than with Nikki. But we had more power gems as well. So probably really close between Zombie Edge and Nikki, depending how many gems you keep. Okay, drip plate build. Let's do this. I'm really curious how hard this hits. And again, at 6-star silver, I think Tori is probably going to be better than Priest, but I don't know that for sure. I'd have to test it, and I'd have to test it at 6-star silver. So you could also sub Tori um, for Priest, where Priest is. Lucky 76, where you do be those silver. Okay, so last build set. Drippy drip. Haven't tried this yet. No idea what this is going to hit. Uh, I anticipate quite well. And previous isn't going to work for this. I didn't actually run it. I just took a picture of it. Okay. We're good. So we are good to go. Let's see what this does. I think there's going to be some variance in it, depending where your multiplies go, right? I think we want to try and force them all to one side as much as possible. So we have a better chance of... Um, clipping a bunch. We're going to do our sub mostly on one side. You can obviously lose some of them during the sub, and we will. Definitely don't want any in this column, and hopefully not in that column, right? So that looks like a good chunk over here. See how hard this hits. Seven point two million. That's not terrible. The sub and all that jazz. I'll run it a couple more times. Yeah. 
Burn it at least once more. Maybe twice. And I'll crank the speed to two times now. Because I know there's going to be a decent amount of people interested in what this build set looks like. I'm not really sure how I feel about Drew overall either. I think he's really good. But Striker is really loaded. And you guys that know me know I don't like uh, having to put a drip on someone. So I do like that he's though pretty controlled. And I like this sub power gem thing. For sure. Terrible on the spread. One, two, three. This column is not good. Three, four. We definitely want that one. There's only one hand in here. Yeah, it's six of this, half a dozen the other. 7.1. Like the 7.2. Honestly, I think there's a shot, to be honest. Rhonda's jacket might actually be. Let's throw it on. Around his jacket might actually be just as good, if not better. But I don't know. what's. What do you guys think is more rare, plate-wise? Around his jacket or drip? Let me know in the comments. Thank you, Clubber. I felt like the drip was maybe going to hit a little bit harder than that. Because I, uh, for seven million, I would find it hard to say unless I had a bunch of drips. Yeah, I'm gonna throw a drip on this guy. Actually, I don't think I would at all, unless I had like many drips, or I was a Drew Mark, right? Or I was a Drew Mark. And for this one, we definitely should have taken Priest off, and be running. Um, well, I don't have Tori or Nikki Max, so it really doesn't matter actually. But Tori would be great for this build set. That's the one I would use with the Rhonda's jacket. But she's not leveled up yet. Let's see how hard this is. Look at this an extra black gem. Let's do it. That was not impressive at all. We didn't keep very many black gems. And we wouldn't need to hit the sub again. Or power gems, I'm sorry. We didn't keep very many power gems. I'll put EO on. And run it the next time. It didn't really change much. Still a two cycle win. Drained a little bit more. 5.2 million. That's kind of disappointing. All right. I'll put EO on. One more. Actually, I think that's enough. EO would add a little bit. She's move damage. Doesn't scale into 6-star silver. I think that's enough. Alright, so let's talk about McIntyre. Coach is really interesting. I want it, but I don't know. For me, at this point, with my roster, I don't feel like it makes a difference uh, for me at this point. Um, So where does he fit in striker-wise? Like, I'd much rather have a drip on Rocky76, personally. I don't think it's that close. Uh, Butch. Him and Butch are actually pretty similar. Couple cycle wins. Uh, although Butch, if you have a Judgment Day plate, I think Skyrocket's past him. If you don't, not so much. Speed-wise, I think he's very similar to KO, assuming KO has a Hogan plate. Uh, without a Hogan plate, I think Drew's better. Um, probably. Very similar. Rocker's Rocker. Uh, Rocker's better than Drew if you like the playstyle. Uh, Drip-wise, though, 76 is much better, in my opinion. Uh, what else we got? Uh, got to talk about Bischoff, because Master Jim, uh, if you have his moment, Drip Plate, all that jazz, he's going to exceed 13 million in feuds so with one gear, uh, let alone two. Uh, but it's a lot to put into it, so I think he's not as good as Bish. Um... I'm a big fan of Triple Black Lashley, or sorry, Triple Red Lashley, especially with Ronda's jacket. So I would probably give the nod to Lashley with Ronda's jacket. 
to be honest. Um, so I think he's very good because he's right up there, right? It's just he doesn't have a super fast win button. It's a couple cycles with a sub. The power gem stuff is really, like, probably my favorite, actually. It was this one. However, you can miss if you don't get with bad attitude, because it's really simple to run. Even if you don't have bliss, you're still going to have good damage. You don't need a 17k Santa Hogan. And it was really nice to cycle wins. But you do need that black match, or with bad attitude, uh, a blue match. But I would say that's my favorite, and I think that's really a very good build set. Uh, so if you don't have a lot of fancy stuff, right, uh, I would say at that point, this build set is probably better than um, Butch because it's more control. Um, it's on par with KO's stun lock. Maybe not quite as safe, uh, but probably faster. And this is assuming no Hogan play, right? Rocky 76 without a drip, you can still stun lock. I think Drew might be faster with this, so a little bit safer for KO and Rocky, a little bit slower. Um, HBK, of course, would be better. Uh, so I think that's how I would probably rank him. Bischoff without stuff uh, is not better. Um, Lashley is going to be pretty similar without Ronda's jacket. Maybe, yeah, I'd say very similar, actually. So I think that's about where he fits in. So uh, obviously, uh, Kurt with Gears is one of the best strikers in the game. Um, so, I, but I'm not really talking about that for this one because he's a Hall of Famer. But yeah, Kurt with both gears would certainly be be uh, quite a bit better. Um, so I think he's very good, very good coach. I think a lot of people are going to want him, and he's a solid fighter too. Uh, plus, he's Drew McIntyre. So let me know what you guys think in the comments. Hopefully, you enjoyed this preview. I tried to go really in depth on it. Uh, if it was too much, let me know. If it was just right, let me know, etc. Um, remember to like, subscribe, and share because that actually helps me out. Other than that, guys, thanks for watching and good luck out there. Watch Merrick's gaming videos. He's the best.